It is the best of times. It is the worst of times. In the year 2015, people have access to a breadth and depth of information unimaginable in an earlier age. Everyone contributes in some way, participating to create a living, breathing mediascape. However, the press as you know it has ceased to exist. The fourth estate's fortunes have waned. 20th century news organizations are an afterthought, a lonely remnant of a not too distant past. The road to 2015 began in the late 20th century. In 1989, Tim Berners-Lee, a computer scientist at the CERN Particle Physics Laboratory in Switzerland, invents the World Wide Web. Amazon.com is founded in 1994. Its young creator dreams of a store that sells everything. Amazon's model, which will come to set the standard for internet sales, is built on automated, personalized recommendations, a store that can make suggestions. In 1998, two Stanford programmers unleash Google. Their algorithm echoes the logic of Amazon. It treats links as recommendations, and from that foundation powers the world's fastest and most effective search engine. In 1999, a dot-com startup named Pyra Labs unveils Blogger, a personal publishing tool. Friendster arrives on the scene in 2002, and hundreds of thousands of young people rush to populate it with an incredibly detailed catalog of their lives, their interests, and their social networks. Also in 2002, Google launches Google News, a portal featuring headlines and links to the stories of the minute. Journalism organizations cry foul. Google News is edited entirely by computers. In 2003, Google buys Blogger. 2004 would be remembered as the year that everything began. Reason Magazine sends subscribers an issue with a satellite photo of their houses on the cover and information custom tailored to each subscriber inside. Google unveils Gmail with a gigabyte of free space for every user. Microsoft launches Newsbot, a social news filter. Google buys Picasa a tool for organizing images. Amazon releases A9, a search engine built on Google's technology that also incorporates Amazon's trademark recommendations. And then, in August, Google goes public. A wash in new capital, it acquires Keyhole, a company that maps the world and puts it online. Google also begins digitizing and indexing the world's libraries. Apple's iPod inspires podcasting, and the age of personal radio begins. We can all broadcast our own thoughts, our own music, directly to each other's music players. 2005. In a response to Google's recent moves, Microsoft buys Friendster. Apple releases the Wi-Fi Pod, a portable media player with integrated camera that can send and receive podcasts and images on the go. 2006. Google combines all of its services into the Google Grid, a universal platform that provides a functionally limitless amount of disk space and bandwidth to store and share media of all kinds. Each user selects her own level of privacy. She can store her content securely on the Google Grid or publish it for all to see. It has never been easier for people to make their lives part of the media landscape. 2007. Microsoft responds to Google's mounting challenge with NewsBotster, a social news network and participatory journalism platform. NewsBotster ranks and sorts news based on what each user's friends and colleagues are reading and viewing, and it allows everyone to comment on what they see. sees the alliance that will challenge Microsoft's ambitions. Google and Amazon join forces, forming Google's on. Google supplies the Google Grid, an unparalleled search technology. Amazon supplies a social recommendation engine and its huge commercial infrastructure. Together, they use their detailed knowledge of every user's social network, demographics, buying habits, and reading interests to provide total customization of content and advertising. 
This year, the New York Times switches to a paid subscription model online. However, its content stream remains open to Googlezon's indexing computers. The news wars of 2010 are notable for the fact that no actual news organizations take part. Googlezon and Microsoft face off, enhancing their services week by week. Googlezon finally checkmates Microsoft with a feature the software giant cannot match. Using new algorithms, Googlezon's computers screen stories for names, places, images, and other contextual cues, isolating facts from quotes and turning statistics into flexible equations. Then, Googlezon resorts, recalculates, and recombines these scraps with our information. Our blog entries, our photos, our purchases, our lives. Suddenly, news is more relevant than ever before. In 2011, the slumbering fourth estate awakes to make its first and final stand. The New York Times company sues Googlezon, claiming that the company's fact-stripping robots are a violation of copyright law. The case goes all the way to the Supreme Court, which, on August 4, 2011, decides in favor of Googlezon. On Sunday, March 9, 2014, Googlezon unleashes Epic. The evolving, personalized information construct is the system by which our sprawling chaotic mediascape is filtered, ordered, and delivered. Everyone contributes and many people get paid. A tiny cut of Googlezon's immense advertising revenue, proportional to the popularity of their contributions. Epic produces a custom content package for each user, using his choices, his consumption habits, his interests, his demographic, his social network to shape the product. At its best, tailored to its savviest readers, Epic is a summary of the world deeper, broader, and more nuanced than anything ever available before, but at its worst, and for too many, Epic is merely a collection of trivia, much of it untrue, all of it narrow, shallow, and sensational. In 2014, the New York Times goes offline. In feeble protest to Googlezon's hegemony, the Times becomes a print-only newsletter for the elite and the elderly. 2015. Pinky Nankani, a refugee from the defunct New York Times Digital Edition, finds a new journalistic calling. She begins to collect and filter GPS-tagged neighborhood broadcasts. Soon, Pinky's feed is a local lodestone, and more and more of her neighbors tag their broadcasts with GPS data as they realize they too can be a part of it. Hey, it's me. If you're listening, I think a bunch of us are going to go meet up at Progress Park. Um, we're thinking about doing like a little barbecue. I was thinking hey, you're going to the park and not bother with Ninth Street. There's this big accident at Garfield, and it's all backed up. It's totally a mess. So, um, Have you guys gone out today? If you haven't gone out today, please go out today. It's an incredible day. Take a look at this.